Well, thank you so much. Thank you for bearing with me while I got that set up. Um, so, and, and thank you for organizing the whole thing. I really appreciate the opportunity to do this. So um, I'm gonna talk about an artistic technique uh, called tablet weaving. And now that I've got it all set up, I actually, um, <laughs> I'm afraid to stop my screen sharing now, but I really wanna, wanna show you full screen um, what it looks like to tablet weaving. So I'm going to, um, so what this is, so a loom basically is anything that lets you weave and weaving is just moving threads in and out of other threads basically. Most kinds of weaving have some vertical threads here, which are called the warp and a thread that goes back and forth between the warp. That's called a weft. So yeah, let's see, can you see the shuttle there? So the shuttle is the thing that holds the yarn and it's gonna go back and forth. And what I'm going to try to do from a very awkward angle is show you that if we move these cards, you can see the different threads moving up and down maybe. And that lets me create different patterns when I put the shuttle back in. This is a very awkward thing to do in this position, but you get maybe the idea. And then I can turn the cards again and move it back. But you can also move these cards individually. So the way that these cards move is very flexible. This is a very flexible form of weaving and you can form very intricate patterns with it as you can maybe see. All right, so now the type of pattern that I'm going to be uh, doing and the type of pattern that I showed you is known as Egyptian diagonals. Um, it's it's probably not really Egyptian. Uh, the, uh, um, it's named because, well, so it started with uh, discoveries in Egyptian tombs of um, things, painted pictures of fabric that looked like this. And people said, well, how were those made? And somebody came up with the idea early in the 1900s that maybe it was made by tablet weaving using this technique. With more research, probably not actually, but tablet weavers still call it Egyptian diagonals. And there are some characteristics. So there are these bold stripes. That's one characteristic, the bold diagonal stripes. And another characteristic is uh, the angled boundaries between the stripes. Right. And I'm going to refer to sometimes the Z direction and the S direction for the different diagonals. And if you think about the letter Z, it's got that crossbar going one way and the letter S has that crossbar going the other way. Um, so you've got this, that, that's a convenient way that uh, uh, fiber people use to, to talk about those two different directions. So far so good. Please stop me at any point uh, if you have any questions. Okay, now as your tablet weaving, um, this is uh, uh, different from other kinds of weaving because in lots of other kinds of weaving, the threads go just go up and down. But here we're turning the cards. So that actually puts some twist on the threads. And if you're not careful, this twist builds up. And on a loom like the one that we're seeing here, um, there's not really anywhere for it to go. There are, you can, you can, uh, 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 design special looms that have turnbuckles, which, which automatically take out the twist, but most looms aren't designed like that. So if you're not careful, the twist builds up. So you want patterns that are designed so that not only, you know, do you get symmetry um, all the way along, but even at any point, you don't want the twist to build up too much. So at any point, 
hopefully you haven't turned too many ways uh, 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 to the, the cards, you haven't turned the cards too much in one direction without turning it back the other direction. So my idea was to make a system for randomly generating these patterns that had this built-in idea of balancing the twist. Now, since basically we just decide whether to turn the cards one way or another way, we can model this with a, a finite uh, random process like a Markov chain. So a Markov chain is anything where uh, depending on where you are, and I'm going to use these numbers here, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, to indicate twists. So 0 is balanced, 1 is uh, maybe a clockwise twist, negative 1 is maybe one counterclockwise twist. And depending on where you are at any point, there's some probability of going one direction or the other. So this is uh, uh, the simplest way that you could try to keep the twist from building up, which is just if the twist isn't too much, twist one way with 50% uh, uh, probability, twist the other way with 50% probability. And then if the twist is built up too much, you always, well, in this case, I don't know what you always do. This wasn't supposed to be a weaving pattern. In this case, I guess you just stay where you are. You don't do anything, All right? The one I'm going to use is not this one. The one I'm going to use is a mean reverting uh, Markov chain, which means that the farther away you get from zero, the more likely it is to move back towards zero. And I've really chosen to do this in just about as simple a way as possible. Um, but this has a, a long, fairly long history. It was originally used to model uh, diffusion in gases, um, there's an urn model for it, you know, moving balls back and forth between different urns with probabilities. Um, the idea basically is that if you're at the origin, you have, you know, 50% chance of moving in each direction. If you're not at the origin, you're slightly more likely to move back towards the origin. And the farther away you get from the origin, the more likely you are to move back towards the origin. Can you see the pointer? here? Or am I just moving it around with no? Oh, you can see it. Oh, good. <laughs> so this is the equation that governs the probability that we're moving back towards the origin. And it has the same uh, characteristic that um, if there's a maximum allowable distance. And if you get all the way to whatever you specify as that maximum allowable distance, then you always have to move back. But even if you're not at the maximum allowable distance, you're slightly more likely to, to revert to that mean to move back towards that center. So, all right. Um, so in previous work with a different sort of uh, uh, tablet weaving pattern, so this is also a tablet weaving pattern, but, uh, oh, I should have uh, 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 pointed out, I apologize, but I should have pointed out that in, uh, These threads, uh, these cards are going to be threaded in the Egyptian diamonds. They're going to be threaded with two light and two dark, which is not the way it's threaded here. This is actually threaded for, for Coptic, um, which is one uh, dark and three light. All right, so that's an important difference between my previous work and the new work. So in the previous work with the one dark and three light and it doesn't have that uh, characteristic angled transitions. So I just modeled each of these vertical columns, which is a block of four cards in the Coptic diamonds, with a different Markov chain. So that worked fine for Coptic diamonds. These are our randomly generated Coptic diamonds patterns. For Egyptian diagonals, they're interesting but they don't show that characteristic transition. Uh, uh, well, they don't really show much in the way of diagonals. There's just a lot of sort of squiggles, all right? Um, artistically, it's not bad, but uh, um, it's not characteristic of, a, of an Egyptian diamond pattern, all right? So after a lot of, of trials, um, I worked out a way of instead of modeling in straight columns, 
um, I modeled using uh, half diamond shapes. So um, let me try to explain this here. So the green and yellow here is one column, and the black and white is the second column, and the other green and yellow is the third column, and then it, it, it's symmetric, just because I like the symmetry. Um, and and because the symmetry is, is characteristic of, of many of these patterns. Um, and But the fact that um, we're stepping uh, time steps, so this is time step one, and then in time step two, the diagonals reverse. So you have a chance for diamond shapes, which are characteristic of Egyptian diagonals. And you also have a chance to get these angled transitions. Right? So the Markov chain is exactly the same, but they're no longer strictly, uh, each chain is no longer strictly controlling a certain set of cards. The cards move in and out of which chain they're associated with. Um, but that's just uh, a question of translating um, the computer generated pattern into the instructions for turning the cards. All right, so both the weaving and the mathematics work just the same as, as if it was less complicated, um, as the transition in between is a little more complicated. So uh, I wrote a computer program um, in the processing language, if you're familiar with the processing language. Uh, it's, uh, if not, it's, it's based on Java, but simplified in a way that makes, if you've ever programmed graphics in Java, I feel sorry. <laughs> um, don't, <laughs> if you can avoid it. Um, processing simplifies that process uh, quite a bit. Um, so I wrote a computer program in processing and you can see the diagonals, um, the diagonal transitions, you can see the characteristic diamond shapes. I put a maximum, I tried it with, with several maximum values of twist. So this has a maximum twist of four. Uh, this also has a maximum twist of four. This one, I let the maximum twist go to eight. And this was just a case of letting the computer um, go completely at random in a few dozen times maybe and picking the ones that I like best. And the program also forces horizontal and vertical symmetry. Um, the vertical symmetry is forced because I was hoping that the mean reversion, even though the columns were completely independent, I was hoping that I could just let the program run until they all um, arrived at perfect balance simultaneously. Turns out, if you work through the probability of that happening, it doesn't happen for a very long time if you've got uh, any width to your band, really. So that wasn't going to work. So I just cut it off after a certain amount of time and reversed it. Right? Which, again, is, is artistically um, fine, although it's a little mathematically a little unsatisfying. And then as long as I have that symmetry, I also put a vertical line of symmetry into it. Um, and, and so I got some, what I think are some very nice looking patterns um, that don't build up too much twist. And that was the, the, the goal because, yeah, that was the goal. Because it's awkward and difficult to turn the cards once you've built up too much twist. Um, so maybe there's a better model. Um, I'd like to try, I did a, a few experiments with coupling uh, uh, the adjoining columns, it didn't work great. Um, I still think there's some idea maybe based on a cellular automata model so that, you know, three cells in, in one generation influence the next cell in the next, uh, uh, the center cell in the next generation, or maybe a larger radius even than that. Um, maybe all the cells should have uh, on one generation should somehow influence the next generation. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, haven't gotten anything that's really artistic. Well, I, I haven't gotten anything that really improves the situation, to be perfectly honest. It's still not uh, 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 settling into that, uh, 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 settle. it's still not automatically settling into balance in a reasonable amount of time, but I'm somewhat hopeful. 
Um, uh, and there are many more types of tablet weaving patterns. I should say, by the way, that I have woven both the Coptic, one or two of the Coptic diamond designs, and also I've actually got on the loom right now, uh, I believe this is the one on the left. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, um, I, so, so it does weave up rather nicely, actually. It's not as hard as one might expect from a computer randomly generated pattern. It actually is very idiomatic in a tablet weaving technique um, compared to some other computer generated art that I've done or seen. So, um, but I'd like to, to experiment with other different types of tablet weaving. Um, there are lots of different ways of threading the card. There are cards with different numbers of holes. There are triangular cards, there are hexagonal cards. There are techniques where you only thread three out of the four or two out of the four holes. And even with the same, you know, one and three threading for Coptic diamonds and two and, three, uh, two, and two threading for Egyptian diagonals, there are different design aesthetics um, that have different characteristic, uh, uh, maybe different uh, uh, ways of dividing up uh, the, uh, uh, the grid um, to get different design aesthetics would be another thing that I'd, I'd definitely like to play with. Um, that's all I've got. Thanks very much. I'm happy to take any questions.